All right, hello and welcome to another episode of RC Printer. I'm your host, Jordan Visco, and today we're gonna show you how to put the finishing touches on this guy right here. This is the OpenZ version 30 3D printable 128th scale Mini Z RC car by Guaro 3D, and it has the Ferrari F40 body on it. Now in our last video, we actually already showed you how to put this guy together, but today we're gonna take you through some of those finishing touches, including uh, putting some paint and primer on the body, adding the TPU side mirrors, reworking the electronics on the inside so everything fits a bit better, adding some magnets to the body and to the chassis so that you can clip the body on and off just like that. We did some work on the steering to help it move a bit smoother, and we fixed the front suspension so we're getting a little bit more of a bounce than we did in the past. So if 3D printed cars are up your alley, make sure you stay with us. And remember, as always, if you're looking for cool ideas of 3D printed projects to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, check us out at rcprinter.com. On with the show. So the first thing we're gonna work on here is this body and you can see where we epoxied the two halves together. It shifted a bit while it was drying. So we're gonna take a moment and we're gonna cut the two pieces apart, hopefully without breaking anything. And then we'll epoxy them back together again. So while that dries, we're gonna work on the front suspension. The suspension wasn't moving that great, and I think it's because the plastic parts were rubbing against each other too tightly. So to start off here, we're gonna take the front end apart. Now that we've got everything apart, we're gonna open up the holes on the ends of the steering arm so they can move freely up and down on the little metal connecting rods. Next, we're going to sand down the suspension arms a bit so that they move freely in the chassis channel. And also, we'll add a little bit of lube to make sure everything moves optimally, and then we'll put her back together. There we go, it's all back together and everything is moving perfectly and freely and we can now move on to the electronics. For the electronics we've got a newer, smaller 2S LiPo battery that should fit better inside the body. But unfortunately it came with the wrong connector so the first thing we're going to have to do is solder on a new JST plug to match what's on the ESC. The important thing here is to remember to only cut and then solder one of the battery wires at a time so that the battery doesn't have a chance to short out. Now I'll show you how I organized everything so that everything fits in the body nicely. Okay, so it actually took a bit of time here to figure out how to get all these electronics integrated nicely so that the cover can fit on top. And one of the issues we had was the ESC. If it slid over to the side, it actually rubbed against the top and put it on against the body. So we ended up moving it slightly inwards and strapping it down, not on the actual two holes, which are here and there, but actually through this hole and then under 
uh, the center of this chassis piece here. Then we ended up direct wiring the ESC to the motor. So the JST connectors that we were using are now gone and we just used a little zip tie on the, this bar piece here that bolts the front and back end together. That saved us a bit of space as well. Um, all the cabling for the servo has been shoved under here. The uh, receiver wire for the ESC has also been tucked in there. So everything's all tucked away nice and neat. And then when we want to put the battery in, we just connect it like that. We slide it on the side here. And we just kind of place it all like that. And then we can clip the body on top. Okay, so we got our body here and we're just about ready to start in on some paint. First thing we're going to do is take a little bit of this 400 grit sandpaper and just give it a bit of a rub all over. Uh, get some of these rub edges off right here. Mostly in the wheel wells, there's a bit of rough spots. And just all over, if we rough it up a bit, the paint's going to stick a bit better. So uh, we'll do that quickly. And then we'll start off with a coat of primer and see how one coat does. Maybe we'll do two coats uh, sanding in between and uh, we'll go from there. So here we are after our first coat, gave it a little light spray. We're just trying to get rid of some of these layer lines in here. We don't want to fill in too many of the details. And then once it dries, we can give it a sand and see if we can get rid of some of these lines and uh, also these seams here where the pieces join together. Okay, as we can see here, it's looking real nice. Give it a quick sand. Just very gentle, trying to remove some of those layer lines. And then we'll, uh, we'll give it coat too. Okay, second coat of primer is done here. We're gonna give it a light sand and then we'll do our first coat of actual paint. Alright, so here we are with our paint jobs, looking pretty good so far, we've got one coat on. Uh, I did flip it over and give it a coat underneath here too, just so we can get a few of the bottom areas uh, done a little bit nicer, and it's looking really good, I'm loving this red color. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a quick sand right now, and then we'll put our final coat on, I hope. All right, here is our body. It's looking pretty good. Most of the layer lines are gone. The paint did start to crackle a little bit, um, so it's not as good as I'd like it to be, but it'll work. We're gonna mask it off now and get some black on it, and then we'll get the magnets on and get it back on the car. All right, here we are. We've got the body all taped off. These are the parts that are gonna get a little bit of black see some of the lights up front here they're gonna get black as well Got a little bit of black mixed up and we'll throw it on our sprayer All right, so it's mostly dry now. We're gonna go ahead and take off the tape, see what we're left with. All right, there we go. Pretty happy with that. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the side mirrors that we printed out of TPU. 
and a couple uh, rear lights, and then we'll get it installed properly with the magnets. Now we're gonna attach these little side mirrors that are printed at a TPU, and we're just gonna do that with a little tiny dab of CA glue. Take the little mirror they are. There is a right and a left. Make sure you put the right one in the right side. Put a little drop of CA on there. Like that. And we'll do the other side. All right, now we're gonna add a little bit more CA glue to the back light holes. And then we're gonna grab some of these little mini lights here. And shove them in. Get them a tight fit, they will go. Buttons. And the last one. Snazzy. Okay, now I can put in these magnets. Again, just a little dab of CA glue in there. Slide our magnet into place. And it slides nicely into the little hole there. Squeeze it in all the way. All right, get the other one in. And then we'll make sure these go on the right way here. And they'll go right in here. I'm actually using the wrong kind of glue in the video here for the magnets on the body. And I ended up having to redo this later with a thicker glue, like an epoxy, because the designer made the holes a bit too big for the magnet. And you really need a glue that can fill some space so that the magnet can be held flush with the opening of the hole. Okay, so one final thing here is I found that the steering was um, catching a little bit, and so a couple things I did to try and fix that. First off, um, I took a little Dremel and Dremeled off these inside corners here. Now the designer has actually fixed this in the newer design files, so you'll find that these are beveled already uh, when you print them, but for me they weren't, so I just had to grind those off a bit with my Dremel. And then the other thing I noticed that was happening was right down here, uh, the bottom of this servo arm is actually rubbing against uh, this piece on the chassis down here. And so what I had to do is take this servo arm off and then trim it a little bit just on the bottom so that it wouldn't rub anymore. And so yeah, now that steering is uh, moving a whole lot better. All right, we got her together here. Let's see how she runs. Runs pretty well and it looks amazing too. So I certainly hope you'll consider building one of these OpenZ V30s by Guaro 3D. And remember as always, if you're looking for cool ideas of 3D printed projects to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, check us out at rcprinter.com.